Hi guys, welcome back to Summerween day four in the start of this vlog. I am so excited to be sharing this with you today. I'm going to be giving you an update on Fatal Fudge Swirl by Mary Allen while I prep my bread to be baked. In my previous Summerween vlog, which I can link above for you, we prepped the dough and I've now let it rose overnight and we are going to go ahead and just prep it for baking. I have the oven set. I will have the full recipe for the bread. Uh, down below. It is by a YouTuber, Frugal Fit Mom, aka Christine. I love her channel and she has this amazing video on it, so I'll link that video down below for you to check out. But this is what the bread looks like, or the dough I should say, overnight. So it has rows and we're just going to go ahead and set this on the counter to kind of rest a little bit while the oven preheats. So I'm just sprinkling a bit of flour on this, like, table mat thing. Okay, so Fatal Fudge Swirl, I'm almost halfway through the book. I was doing some reading last night, and I really enjoyed it. So far, the mystery is going very well. I'm very intrigued. I really want to know who did it. I have a couple theories, but nothing, nothing too conclusive. Riley is definitely on her A-game with the sleuthing in this one, and that one, it's just a lot of fun. So, I'm enjoying that. We're just going to go ahead and let this sit a little bit. This is a very sticky dough, so I always kind of like just gently pat it with flour so it's a little less sticky. And then I'm going to just set up the parchment paper. I have two pans here because I actually cover it for the first 30 minutes. And then the last 15 minutes you take the lid off, so I'm just going to use the second pan as the lid. So I am really enjoying Fatal Fudge Swirl. I feel like it's a great story, great characters, all of that I expected because like I said, I really love this series. I did have some ice cream to actually eat during it this time and that was helpful. The wedding details, absolutely fabulous. I'm really enjoying learning about the history that the hotel represents because some of the rooms have been renovated to this like very luxurious like suite and then other rooms have the remaining like history from the hotel because it's been around for a long time so I'm really enjoying that and there's some kind of interesting subplot that's coming up about the ice cream shop which I'm interested in learning more about but everything's going really well for so far for this I don't have a major update just enjoying it great characters Plot's going well. The pacing in the series has been really good consistently where I'm never feeling like it's lagging. It's just continuous. You know, we're going, we're going to the next part. It's nothing that's ever really feels like a drag to get through, which I appreciate because right now I'm in the middle of the book and that's kind of the slow point for some books where it just kind of hits a little bit of a lag and that doesn't happen with this series that I've experienced. So I'm very excited for that. And I'm going to let this bread sit here for about... 20 minutes or so while the oven preheats and then we'll just stick it in here and let it cook. I got a little nice little bubbles here. Does anyone else I just love touching the dough. The dough is like it's so satisfying. Day. Mondays are usually pretty busy for me, so I did not get a ton more reading done, but Fatal Fudge Swirl is still going well. I'm planning on giving it some good time tonight and probably finishing this book off, so I'll give you an update in the morning. And then I'm planning on starting Play the Fool by Lena Churn tomorrow. Very excited for this. This should be a pretty quick read. It's under, it's just about 300 pages, and the font is fairly, like it's not, it's not too small or anything. So I think I'll fly through this pretty well. I'm very excited. I've never read anything by this author, so excited for that. But I did get some book mail. So a couple books that I've ordered. I know I have 
a couple books coming this week that I ordered for a video at the end of this month so definitely hit subscribe I'm very excited for that one and then a couple like new newer releases I'm excited for so I thought I would open these with you guys now Ooh, okay so we have getting old is murder this is the meat gladi gold Florida's oldest private eye by Rita Lackin and I'm very excited for this what a cute cover is that not darling I love the back it says she's not Miss Marple her friends are no Charlie's angels nevertheless 75 year old Gladie Gold and her gang of Fort Lauderdale retirees are out about and hunting down a killer one who is silently stalking them I'm so excited for this this looks really really cute and I just love the cover for this so stay tuned that's going to be for a video later this month so we also have the darling Delilah's and the cucumber tree this is part of a the Darling Delilah's Mystery Series by Susan Whitting Albert. This is again for a video later this month, so I'm going to put that aside. But this one is a new release that I'm very excited for, and this is Murder is a Piece of Cake, a Baker Street Mystery. It's book two in the series, written by Valerie Burns. How gorgeous is that cover? I love the colors on this. It's so vivid, the contrast between the blue and her white shirt and orange apron. Awesome awesome color choices. I absolutely love that. We have a close-up of the Mastiff in the series named Baby, which is just hilarious because Mastiffs are giant, giant dogs. So I'm very excited for this. I really enjoyed the first book in the Baker Street series. The first book in the series is called Two Part Sugar, One Part Murder, and I absolutely adored it. I thought Madison or Maddie was a really cool character. She gets stuck in the situation where she's inherited her I think it's like her great, great aunt Octavia's like big house, but she also has to run her aunt's bakery, baby cakes, and take care of her mastiff baby to inherit, basically. It's like a part of the will. So she decides to start running this bakery, and she doesn't like dogs, she doesn't know how to bake, so she's just out of her element. And this takes place in southwest Michigan, and I think Maddie was from like Florida or some like big city, so a very big like culture shock big change in weather, big change in lifestyle, so really fun. She also is like a social media expert or manager. That was her previous job, so she brings a lot of that into the storyline, which I think is fun. So it's definitely a very like millennial sleuth kind of approach. I really like that. I did a video on millennial sleuth. Actually, I'll link this above. I included the series. It's one of my favorites. So I'm really excited for this one. Basically, there's a new bakery that opens up in town. There's a bunch of competition. Someone dies. Drama ensues. If we have time this week, I would love to start this book. It's only it's only like 250 pages, actually. So it's actually a very short, cozy mystery. But I am so excited. I've been dying to get my hands on this. So those are the three books that had come in. I might have a few more come in this week and maybe some library books. I'll show you I'll show you anything I get this week and I'll see you guys in my next update. Today is Tuesday, it is Summerween day 5 and I'm here a little bit later than I wanted to be, it is like 6 o'clock something at night right now. I just got back from a nice evening walk so I'm a little red faced, that's why it's a bit warm out. But I have some updates for you and a little bit of a library book haul, just a little mini one so I thought I'd share what I picked up. But let's start with the reading update and that is for Fatal Fudge Swirl. So unfortunately I didn't finish this last night like I wanted to but I am less than 100 pages from the ending right now so I wanted to give you kind of a final update before jumping in with my final overall thoughts on the book. This is such an amazing story so far. I'm just loving it. I feel like the clues are piling up. I feel like there is a lot going on. There are a lot of characters in this that you're following but everything has been woven in a way that I really understand who is who and how each person is related to our victim and that sort of thing. So I'm really enjoying this. There's some really interesting clues right now that I haven't figured out that I'm really interested to see what 
the connection is to the murder. So I can't wait for that. Like I said before, the Halloween details and the Halloween wedding details, all that's really cool. I'm also really enjoying Riley kind of being undercover in this one because she continues to kind of work as like a housekeeper, as a fill-in at the inn where the murder occurred. So that's really fun. I like watching her nose around and it gives her just great access to people's rooms naturally as a housekeeper so really loving that this is going great I am definitely gonna finish this tonight promise it's just been one of those weeks where the my work week has been insane so I'm a little behind but we will catch up I'm very excited for that and then my next plan then will be to start play the fool by Lena Churn tonight this will be my um, prompt for the black cover and yeah beautiful cover very excited for this this is a little bit on the shorter side it's just about 300 pages and the font is a little bit bigger than most of the books I read so this should be a little bit easier to fly through which will be good for the readathon okay so we picked up some library books today I'm very excited I actually have two nonfiction ones and two mystery or thriller books so let's start with the mysteries I have a most agreeable murder a novel by Julia Seals I talked about this in a new release video I want to say this came out like well, it's June 2nd on here, but I think this came out maybe in May. But basically, this is like Agatha Christie meets Jane Austen. Like, even the artwork on here it looks like something out of a Jane Austen novel. And let's see, we basically have our character, feisty, passionate Beatrice Steele. So she is, des is described as never feeling like she fit into, like, the true lady stereotype. So I don't see a specific, like, decade this took place in, but it does take place, it's a historical fiction cozy, it does take place in a small town in England, and Beatrice is a very outspoken passionate young woman and she is not quite what you would consider a lady she doesn't like to sew she doesn't want to sing she's not big on the whole you know domestic you know sphere of like domestic things that she's kind of expected to like and to excel at as the time dictates she also has a hidden secret and that is that she loves true crime so she's always looking into newspaper clippings and that's kind of her secret hobby and she's got two sisters one who's really beautiful one who's very forgettable she's kind of in the middle where she's kind of sounds like she's the one who probably gets into trouble for not falling into that the stereotypes that a lady should be in and basically she decides that for the benefit of her family she is going to try her best at this upcoming ball to attract the attention of the most like eligible bachelor to see if she can get a good marriage proposal offer and benefit her family financially I imagine so she goes with full intention to you know be the best lady she can when the person who she's trying to attract like the eligible guy here is murdered so now she is wrapped up in a murder investigation and she's having to maintain her kind of lady-like status, play card games and play like just listen in, listen to the gossip, try to figure things out. It just sounds like a lot of fun. Like I said, kind of Jane Austen meets Agatha Christie. I'm excited for this and the cover is stunning. I yeah, I just absolutely love the cover. So that is our first book. Next I have The Spare Room by Andrea Bartz. So this has been a big anticipated release for a lot of people this summer. I'm very excited for this. I have never read anything by this author but I've heard good things. The basic premise for this is we have our main character Kelly. She's got a new life in Philadelphia. She's got a new job. Unfortunately the lockdowns happen and she finds herself jobless and also homeless because her and like her boyfriend or partner that she was living with break up. So now she's in this really bad spot but she has one silver lining and that is that she's recently rekindled a friendship with her friend Sabrina who so happens to be fabulously wealthy of course <laughs> what thriller doesn't have like a fabulously wealthy friend it seems like they all do but that's you know she owns this beautiful big home here and she's married and they're like the perfect couple and they are like hey why don't you come stay with us we have plenty of room here you know the spare room is open to you so Kelly takes them up on it because she really has nowhere else to go and you know her and Sabrina are good friends what could go wrong well it's a thriller so of course everything's gonna go wrong but she gets there and she actually ends up kind of falling in love with both her friend Sabrina and her friend Sabrina's husband which is kind of interesting and I guess they all kind of start a relationship together I don't know how that's gonna go I hope it's not I'm hoping it's not terribly graphic we'll see I might be skipping a few pages but they start some kind of relationship and the more Kelly gets in deep with these people the more she realizes that there was previously a female guest who was staying there in the spare room before her 
but now this woman has like mysteriously disappeared and there's no answers. So Kelly starts to kind of panic and wonder did they, did the couple have something to do with it? So she starts to look into this. I've heard some mixed reviews about this so far. I've seen some people really like it and a few YouTubers that I really like say they didn't like it. So I'm kind of nervous about this one, but we're going to see. I'm going to give it a try. I absolutely adore how they did the font on this with the color, like this gradient. It's so beautiful. Love the cover, if nothing else. So that one is exciting. This next one is by an author I really enjoy, and this is by Gretchen Rubin. It's called Life in Five Senses, and she is the best-selling author of The Happiness Project. She also wrote The Four Tendencies. I really love her work. It's kind of a combination of, it's non-fiction, but it's written in this very memoir-styled, like, writing style. So she's basically kind of telling her experiences and story through the lens of, like, some kind of project that she's exploring. For example, in the Happiness Project, she's exploring how to create more happiness on a daily basis. And she takes each month and kind of themes it by different advice by different, like, people and, like, scientists and things like that about increasing your happiness and she kind of puts it to the test herself but she also incorporates research and interviews and stuff so it's kind of a nice combination of both storytelling through her life but then also the the non-fiction and the research so I really like that combo I feel like it's easy to remember when it's told in the story and this is her new book and it's how exploring the senses got me out of my head and into the world and I'm definitely someone who can be very much all up in my head so this one sounded really good it's basically about using your five senses to really be in the moment more. So she calls it a journey of self-experimentation and she's exploring the mysteries and joys of the five senses and a path to a happier, more mindful life, drawing on cutting-edge science, philosophy, literature, and her own efforts. Yeah, so she's kind of broken this book into smell, taste, touch, um, seeing and hearing and just different ways that she explores those senses and different ways to make yourself happier through them. So I'm really excited to see what this was going to reveal. I just love her writing style. I find it very easy to read, very just well explained, interesting. I like her personal stories. I relate to her a lot. I think we have the same tendency, so maybe that's why. And she's also a writer and I work as a freelance writer, so perhaps that's why, but I really recommend her stuff. And last but not least, this book is kind of a wild card, but it's called The Comfort Crisis by Michael Easter, and it's Embrace Discomfort to Reclaim Your Wild, Happy, Healthy Self. I picked this up on a whim after a YouTuber had mentioned it and it sounded very interesting to me. The basic premise is that modern society has we have a very like convenience heavy focus on our lives like making things as convenient as possible and there's nothing wrong with making things convenient but in some ways that can make us a little bit like impatient to actually maybe like sit through and work through things when they are harder because we're so used to that convenient lifestyle so i think this book is basically a quest for rewild diet creative boredom and other sensation restoring discomforts it's chock full of solid science. And this book is actually supposed to make an argument that happiness actually improves when we experience a little bit of discomfort. And he's, you know, he's not, I don't think he's going to suggest like sitting outside in freezing weather for no reason, but just that pushing yourself to do something that's uncomfortable can actually improve like your quality of life and your happiness in some ways and also remind you of how good the happy times are, I think is the general idea. Like I said, totally new to this author. I kind of picked this up on a whim, but I will update you guys in my reading wrap-up, so definitely hit subscribe if you're interested in some updates on these books. That is my library little mini haul, and I will give you guys an update when I finish Fatal Fudge World tonight. See you soon. This was really good. I'm so, so happy with the conclusion of this. I was completely fooled. I fell for a red herring. There was lots of really amazing red herrings in this. The ending was great, really suspenseful. There was some really great kind of subplots to the mystery that came together really well. Some very interesting characters who I'm hoping will show up in some future books within the series. I really, Riley did such a great job unraveling the clues for this. And just the general method for like how the murder was executed was fantastic. Like a very creative, method. I haven't really seen that much and I absolutely love this. I absolutely recommend. I would say like good 4.5 stars. I mean really strong cozy mystery series. If you like a foodie cozy mystery series I think you'll like this. The other books in the series are really good. This is book three. I just couldn't recommend it enough and I'm also really loving there are two cats in this series Sprinkles and Rocky and Sprinkles is like an ex show cat so she is like this diva very spoiled diva like very 
kind of unlikable. She's pretty kind of mean to people. Um, very like snobby, if you could say. But in this one, she actually gets involved with the the film production that they're like they talked about doing at the end, and she is just like lapping up the attention, and it was just hilarious. I loved all of Sprinkles' cameos with that. So I want more Sprinkles. I want more Rocky. Um, I just absolutely love this mystery series. So couldn't recommend this one more. Definitely a knockout. And now I have to impatiently wait for the next book because this one just came out. And then I now I have started. I'm on chapter four, so not super far in, about 35 pages, um, into Play the Fool by Lena Churn. So, so far, this is going really well. You get into the mystery, like, right off the bat. There is no real build-up. You're, like, immediately hopping into the mystery in, like, the first chapter or two. So, a good, quick jump into it. I will say there's a little, a little more crassness to this than maybe your average cozy mystery. It's not, it's not super bad. It's nothing, like, super you know, not like, not like cuss words and stuff, just a little like crasser than usual, but very humorous writing style, I would say. We're inside of our main character, Katie True's head, and she is a tarot card reader, and she's kind of trying to figure out what happened to her friend Marley, because she sees this picture on a customer who she's doing a reading for, his phone, and it's a picture of her friend who appears dead and has like a gunshot wound to the head, and like, obviously that terrifies her so she's starting to investigate that we're hopping in right away with the mystery I like her so far she seems like a pretty likable character relatable she's according to herself she has two siblings and they're both like the golden child or children I should say they both have like successful careers college graduate that sort of thing and she's kind of the one who went to college for a year didn't like it didn't do very well and she's trying to find her own way um, but she's really struggling kind of with that. So I, I, I like that as a take. So I'm finding her a really interesting character. I'm hoping this book will give her a chance to maybe find out where she wants to go in life as well. I don't know if this is part of a series. I couldn't really find that out online. It doesn't look like it's part of a series. It might just be a one-off. I also realized that according to the bio on the back, this is actually Lena Churn's debut novel. So it sounds like she's been published in like Mystery Weekly and a bunch of magazines, but this is her debut novel. So I'm very excited for that. So far the writing style is very it's punchy, it's fast paced, got into the mystery right away. It's definitely very humorous, a little more on the crass side, but in a funny way. I'm enjoying it and I look forward to learning more. So I'll update you guys in the morning. I'm going to go get ready for bed now and do some more reading on this. See you guys tomorrow. Happy Wednesday and Summerween day six. I thought I would give you guys an update on Play the Fool by Lena Churn while I finish up my makeup. I already have like the base on my skin done but I'm gonna do my eyeshadow and stuff so let's go ahead and hop into that so play the fool by Alina Churn I am currently on page 83 so almost a third of the way through this is my first book uh, my first book I'm reading by this author like I said before she is this is her debut novel we're gonna go bright with this makeup so this could be fun or it could turn out really weird we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna see but all points aside the book so far I'm really enjoying it I like the writing style it's very punchy it's very fast-paced it's very um it has some like good self-deprecating humor to it I would say Katie is definitely a character who struggles with like the whole adulting thing like she's got her we've met her brother she's got two siblings that are both kind of like the golden children like they're very very smart and very like accomplished in terms of like professional or academic achievement and Katie's been kind of trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. She's also been having a hard time kind of coming to terms with the fact that she enjoys like tarot card reading because she doesn't really view that as like a real job but people in her life are kind of trying to encourage her which is nice. So I like that. I think the mystery is interesting. We are... This is something I haven't seen a cozy mystery really do before and that is a lot of flashbacks. This one actually almost every other or maybe every third chapter it goes and it does a flashback of Katie's time with Marley who is the victim so that's kind of interesting because that reminds me more of a, a thriller format where oftentimes you have like the present day that you're reading from and then it jumps back to past events so I'm finding that interesting I don't know if I love it but I don't dislike it I'm gonna see I'll have to kind of see at the end if I'm if I got tired of it if it continues for the whole book I don't really know yet 
So, so far though, so good. Writing style is punchy. I will say it's a little crass. It's a, it's a little more crass than I'm used to for a cozy mystery, I will say that. Now, that's not necessarily terrible for me, at least. The main features of a cozy mystery are that you have usually an amateur sleuth, usually a small town setting, which this one also breaks because I think it takes place in Chicago, so that's not always a deal breaker, but for a cozy mystery necessarily, but that is something to consider. So we have that, and then the character is definitely just a little more on the crass side. Some of the dialogue is a little crass. It's not... I think vulgar would be too strong of a term, but crass is probably a good term. It's just a little... It's pushing the boundaries more than typical cozy mystery with, like, language. So keep that in mind depending on your own preferences. It's not bothering me, but it does make it a little bit more just, like, strictly a mystery versus a cozy mystery, in my opinion. That, and combined with, like, the Chicago setting, so you're kind of, like, eliminating several factors that most cozy mysteries have. And not all cozy mysteries do, you know, like, I, I still consider Hercule Perot a cozy mystery, even though he's technically not an amateur sleuth, but everything else fits well. So it depends on your own definition, of course, but I just want to give you a heads up, depending on what you like. And, yeah, but otherwise, I'm really liking Katie. I think the mystery is going really well. The detective is interesting. We're learning a little bit about him. He's not doing a whole lot, mostly because, like they said, no one has, you know, there's no body, so he's not convinced that this person is really missing. So... I don't think it's a lack of, you know, effort or anything. It's just that there's not much for him to do at this point because an adult is missing and technically, you know, an adult can walk off and go and do what they want. So I'm, I'm finding it interesting. It's an interesting take. There's a lot of tarot card references. Like, she'll suddenly get flashes when she's talking to someone about, like, different types of cards that they remind her of. And I have to say, as someone who doesn't... I've never had a tarot card reading or really looked into that sort of thing. Um, it's just not for me personally. I don't know. I don't get all the references, but it is still fun. So I like it. I think it's a fun theme. Okay, so that's a, a look at the final eye makeup, and I'm just going to pop on a nice bright pink lipstick because, like I said, I'm feeling very colorful today. My opinion is you only live once, so why not wear the bright lipstick on a random Wednesday where I'm not really going anywhere? Why not? Okay, so those are my current thoughts on this. I will give you at least one more update on this book, either when I finish it or if I kind of have a good stopping point, I will give you an update on this. But I'm so far, I'm enjoying it. Like I said, writing style is nice. It's punchy. It's a little more crass than a typical cozy mystery, but it is a nice, refreshing writing style for this genre, I think. The topic with the tarot cards is interesting. It's definitely unique different. I've never read anything like that before, and the mystery itself is intriguing. I'm really interested in what the conclusion is going to be since we have no body right now, and I'm very curious about... I, I like, I don't really know where the mystery is going, so I'm intrigued. I'm interested. It's fast-paced. It's easy to fly through, so I'm enjoying this, and I can't wait to read some more. Hi, guys. Happy last day of Summerween. I'm here with some updates quite a few big updates, some not so good updates. Let's go ahead and hop in. So the first update is that I did DNF Play the Fool by Lena Churn. I got about a hundred or so pages in, which is just just about a third of the way into the book, and I, I couldn't keep going. I really wanted to because the theme of this is so interesting, but I just felt like there wasn't a lot of suspense. I felt like we were kind of floundering around with the plot, like not a lot was really happening. And the character Katie started to really get on my nerves. At first, I really liked the fact that she was kind of this like adult who had like failed at adulting, you know, she was really struggling to come to terms with what she wanted to do in life. But the more we got into this book, the more her just general, like, incompetence really just started to annoy me. I mean, she fails, like, at everything, and just everything. And even what she is supposed to be good at, the tarot card reading, she is actually pretty bad at it. She's not very accurate or anything, which I find very interesting because most cozy mysteries, when you have, like, the main character who's, you know, like, a baker or a bookshop seller, you know, whatever, um, they're usually good at what they do, right? That's kind of one of the interesting parts is the slice of life moments and they're passionate about what they do and she just doesn't have passion for really anything and she's not really good at tarot card reading 
even though people keep telling her, oh, well, maybe you should start your own, like, shop reading. I don't I just can't figure her out. I like the fact that she's a very flawed character. I do, but it wasn't very interesting. And it's not like, like, the Noodle Shop mystery series that I really enjoy. Lana is, works at her family's noodle shop, but she can't cook. But she's an amazing, like, manager and hostess and, like, customer service, all of that. So she's still good at what she does and she enjoys what she does at the shop even though she can't cook. So that makes it actually kind of a funny aspect, you know, whereas this was just kind of like, okay, so you're not good at this, you're not good at that, you can't do that, like, what do you do? I don't know, I just, I was getting really annoyed. I was getting annoyed with her and the language was pretty crass. I found it to be a bit much for a cozy mystery, if I'm being honest. It just was too much for me. If it wasn't a thriller, like, it would be completely appropriate. Totally fine. Like, I wouldn't have had a problem with it, but considering this is marketed as a cozy mystery, I did find that to be a bit much. So, it just wasn't my favorite. I think a lot of people could enjoy it. I know some of you have enjoyed it, but it just wasn't for me personally. So, I'm gonna end up giving this, like, a one star because I did DNF it and I wasn't particularly enamored with the writing style or anything it was just it was all okay I would definitely consider reading something from this author again because I think her ideas were really unique but I don't know this just wasn't it for me so we DNF this and I did get something in the mail which I'm very excited for and that is actually the second book in the clue mystery series so this is in the study with the wrench by Diana and Peter Friend this is book two within the trilogy I got that in the mail just yesterday and I was so excited because it's just gorgeous. I love the font. It is actually, it is a used book so it's actually from an old library. So if you're from Oyster Bay, New York, hello, this book is from your old library. But I'm really excited. This book just looks amazing. I'm so excited to get into this one. But I did start a new book the other night because once I DNF played the full, I was like, okay, let's start something. And so I picked up Murder is a Piece of Cake by Valerie Burns, and I am over two-thirds of the way into this book. It is a very short read. This book is only like 250 pages, not including like the recipes at the end, so it is a very short cozy mystery. I'm really loving this. I'm loving this. I am feeling like this could be four or five stars. The first book in the series, two parts sugar, one part murder, I gave 3.5 stars, I want to say. And it was really solid. It was a really good start to a cozy mystery series. And this one is even better. I mean, the characters are coming to life even more. The plot is faster paced. I love a Baby. There's some really good plot lines with the Mastiff Baby in here. And Baby is just the best. Baby might be one of my favorite dog, like, sidekick characters in a cozy mystery series. I'm really enjoying Baby. But Maddie is great. She is really coming into her own. She's learning how to bake more. And so she's actually a character, actually speaking of Play the Fool, with her, with Katie not being good at tarot card reading, Maddie inherited her Aunt Octavia's bakery in the first book, so she had knew nothing about baking. But she's actually taking time to learn and improve her skills and starting to enjoy the process and learn new recipes, and that's really endearing and awesome. Like, she's taking those steps to improve. And in the meantime, she's using her own skill set, which is social media and marketing, to really up Baby Cake, which is the bakery. It's like marketing and branding and stuff, so it's really awesome. The mystery is really good. I love her friend April, who is the sheriff, but her friend April actually, actually gets kind of sidelined in this book, which is kind of an interesting take. I'm enjoying learning more about the characters in the bakery, like Leroy and Hannah. I think they're really interesting characters, and I like Maddie's relationship with the veterinarian Michael. He seems really sweet. They're kind of a cute couple, and it's cute because he takes care of Baby, the Mastiff, and I just am really liking this. It's really cozy. It's delicious. There's a baking competition going on. There's a lot going on with this one, and I have some suspicions for some plot points coming up, and I want to see if I'm right. But either way, I'm really just loving this book. And how I, I can't get over the cover. I just absolutely adore the cover for the series. And then in terms of my official Clue Who Done It book, um, if you've been following along, I've been working on this Clue puzzle uh, mystery like cipher classic interactive mystery where you test your sleuthing skills and there's all these different puzzles and things you can work on really different lots of fun all the characters are kind of reinvented in one way or another which I think is fun but I'm enjoying this I'm not going to finish it during summer ween it's taking me a while to get through some of these some of these are hard okay this is the one I can't figure out so these are dictionary scrambles and they, these are like the inspector on the cases like puzzle these are driving me crazy. So basically you have these little like boxes and you have to make five letter words 
where all the letters are connected but they're such strange words. I've only completed one of them and there's multiples throughout this. I'm having a hard time with that. But I'm really enjoying the crossword puzzles. Chef by Chef White. Really love those. I also like Professor Plum's vocabularies. Voca yeah, vocabularies. Basically, you change one letter per line and it makes a word in between here based on the clue. So that's kind of an interesting, unique take. I like that. And then Scarlet has these word searches, which I think I'm pretty decent at. And I love, Mary Greens is my favorite, the household logic puzzles. Basically you have these like, I guess kind of like a matrix, and then you have a list of the things that need to be filled in here, and you get a bunch of clues about, you know, oh this one is in the same row as this one, and this one is in a corner, and like you have to kind of just logically eliminate different things where they can't be until you can fill that fill it out correctly so I'm loving those those are my favorites probably and yeah we're doing we're doing pretty good I'm getting some we are getting some done here and I will get, I'm just really enjoying it it's really fun if you see this at your grocery store and you like puzzles I'd recommend it it's fun this was an amazing book I'm absolutely so pleased with this I was able to call the ending and some like different twists and things in this book but it was just delivered so strongly. It was such a fun ending. I'm really excited for Maddie. I am excited for the next book in the series because there's some personal things at the end that were hinted about in Maddie's life that are coming to fruition, I'm assuming, in the next book. And I am already dying for the next book. And this one just came out in, I want to say June or May. So it's a really new book and I have no idea when the next release is. So it's probably going to be at least a year from now. And I'm already really impatiently waiting for it because I want more. I think I gotta give this like a 4.5 stars. This was just I really have nothing I didn't like about it for the most part. I mean like I said Maddie is really growing on me as a character. I love Baby. I like the other characters are getting more fleshed out. I'm liking learning more about Maddie and her family, her relationship with her dad. His, she names him the Admiral and he is uh, somebody who worked in the Navy for a very long time and he's very I guess you could say kind of like stringent. He's not the most like, you know, emotional person in terms of giving her like love and affection, which is something she's always missed a bit in her life. I like learning more about her relationship and her background and everything. So it helps you kind of get a better feel for, you know, why she is the person she is today. I love her learning more about the bakery and how they're doing. I want to see her have another grand reopening with things. I cannot wait for more with the series. So like it's gonna be at least a year until the next one comes out and I'm so sad about that but I'm really loving this it was really good they made a lemon meringue pie in this and I was just mouth-watering so good so I can't wait for more for this the strong read absolutely recommend this if you're looking for a millennial cozy mystery series with a millennial sleuth there's a lot of social media references in this if you're looking for a baking cozy mystery if you're a big dog lover especially a mastiff lover you'd really like this there's just not a lot to not love about this so cannot wait for that so for summer ween as a final overview I did read seven books which I'm pretty excited for it. Maybe it's not as big as some people, but I did work full time during most of this, so that definitely, you know, affects it a bit. But these are the books we read. So we have for review The Golden Spoon, The House in the Pines, In the Hall with the Knife, Murder is a Piece of Cake, Play the Fool, Fatal Fudge Swirl, and 15 Minutes of Flame. So we have a total of, I guess, really just one true thriller which was the house in the pines this was excellent 4.5 stars i loved this slow burn but really worth it the golden spoon five stars this was just a classic mystery not a cozy mystery but definitely not too graphic or anything just like a classic whodunit kind of agatha christie style with a baking competition in a castle absolutely read this. I will have my summer ween playlist above if you want to see more thorough reviews and some baking and stuff. I will link those above if you didn't watch those. In the Hall with the Knife, which is a young adult mystery starring like the Clue characters reimagined. Loved that. Murder is a Piece of Cake. Obviously we loved that. 15 Minutes of Flame, which we eh, did not love. It was a two-star read for me. I didn't care for it. The theme was fun, the seasonality was fun, but everything else fell short for me, so unfortunately, not so much for that. Play the Fool, which we did end up DNFing. Again, I think some people could really like this. I, I could see why some people would enjoy this, but it just wasn't it for me. And then Fatal Fudge Swirl, which was an absolute knockout. 
perfect. I mean, if you're reading for Summerween, pick this up. But otherwise, I mean, save this for Halloween. It has a Halloween wedding and a Halloween festival and everything you could want for Halloween. Just absolutely. That is everything. Thank you guys so much for joining me for my first Summerween vlogging experience for this. This was so much fun. It was my first time participating in Summerween. I had a blast. I definitely want to do this next year. Let me know if you did Summerween what you finished reading during this readathon. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. And thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do post new book content every week on the channel, especially in the mystery, thriller, cozy mystery genres. And I don't want you to miss out. So I'll see you guys in my next one. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.